Emma, economists generally think about the energy system in four parts, the power sector, transportation, buildings, and industry. So the power sector in many uh, parts of the world are shifting over to renewables and non-emitting sources of power. But transportation is really a big one, isn't it? I mean, and we're doing okay. Uh, we're doing, it's interesting that, that light duty car, cars and trucks uh, are, are electrifying quickly. But what about medium duty, like delivery vans and heavy duty, like long haul? Yeah, we we also see uh, electrification of of those. Um, it will start a little later and take a little slower um, than electric vehicles. Um, but battery prices are just coming down so quickly, and the range of electric vehicles is going up so fast that it's uh, undeniable that that will have a bigger and bigger impact. Um, there's also new technologies like. Uh, trucks that can charge their own spare battery and then swap it over, or they can just uh, drive to depot and get their battery swapped, for example. Um, so we definitely see that playing a bigger and bigger role. Um, and we shouldn't forget that there are a lot of uh, transportation uh, devices that we don't think about when it comes to electrification, like buses and two and three wheelers, which are big in, in Asia and equipment, construction equipment like excavators and, and so on. Uh, are those sectors uh, also beginning to electrify? Yeah, I mean, two and three wheelers are electrifying extremely quickly, um, particularly in places like, like India, also parts of sub-Saharan Africa, other parts of Southeast Asia. Um, they're very lightweight. Again, it's, it's very easy to have batteries that swap in and out. Um, so that's, that's absolutely happening. Um, I don't know as much about the electrification of uh, construction vehicles, but I imagine that's also happening with the next generation. Um, and what was the, there was one more category. Um, to buses, like school buses, buses. transit buses. Yeah, buses absolutely are also electrifying. I, um, at least in, in large parts of Europe now, um, many bus companies are electric. I, I can't remember the last time I saw a non-electric bus in Oslo. Um, so that is an outlier uh, and an early starter with the electric vehicle revolution. But it, it shows that it, it's more than possible. Are we going to see uh, the faster electrification of transportation as some of the technology improves? And I'm thinking primarily of batteries because we've already seen in the last five years enormous improvements in, uh, in energy density and falling costs and charging infrastructure. Uh, but now yep. we're getting ready. We're probably a couple of years away to, you know, f from uh, solid state batteries. And that seems to me to be maybe a game changer because A, it's safe. There's nothing to uh, catch on fire. And B, energy density goes up by maybe a factor of, of two. What's your take on that? Yeah, again, we don't um, specifically split batteries or, or specifically say that, that there will be a change in technology. Um, but of course, whenever there's an improvement in the technology, especially when that makes that technology cheaper, um, the uptake will will speed up. So, um, and, and it's possible that if it becomes significant enough, then then we can split our model into uh, non steady state and steady state batteries um, and and change their behavior separately. Um, but yeah, anything that makes batteries cheaper and last longer uh, will accelerate the 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 flexibility or availability within the power system. Well, let's talk about buildings now, because I find this fascinating. Uh, we put a heat pump in our house about three years ago, and I wasn't prepared for the improvement uh, that we've experienced, because now it's a com way more comfortable. We have air conditioning in the summer, which we didn't have before, and it's so much cheaper. Our electricity bills uh, didn't go up very much, but now we're not spending any money on gas. So it seems to me that heat pumps are kind of, they're a little uh, behind electric vehicles in terms of deployment, but the benefits are so, are so great and the costs are coming down. Are we going to see a big boom in the deployment of heat pumps? Yeah, 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 we absolutely, uh, we see a big boom in the deployment of heat pumps. And I find it interesting that the overall um, energy demand of heating, we actually see going down because of the heat pumps that are being installed. Um, around the world and because they're so much more efficient than than the alternatives um it does heat pumps i think will be a little bit slower than electric vehicles 
um, partly because it requires a certain level of of, uh, of building insulation that not all regions have, uh, partly because gas is so, there's so many regions that are very, very used to gas. Um, so that switch might take a while. Um, and also they are very expensive um, still, uh, and, and an expense that, because for the car, people are used to the idea that they buy a new car. So they, a lot of the electric vehicles switch happened because people needed to buy a new car and then they decided to buy electric. Um, but it might be slower with the process of people needing a new gas boiler and then choosing to have uh, a heat pump instead. Um, what about other technologies? I, I've done some interviews with folks who are, for example, uh, they're doing HVAC in commercial buildings. And and their AI has emerged as a big factor there, and you know to make it more efficient. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see AI and other technologies uh, make heat pumps more efficient, make them perform better, and then speed up the adoption? Yeah, it's entirely possible. It's um, it's very hard to say how exactly AI will impact energy efficiency, um, which is true across the board. But it is, it's very unlikely that it'll have no effect. And I think that the places it will have most effect is in uh, commercial um, items. So be that heat pumps or AC or even smart readers that are, that are designed by individual electric companies, um, because there's that space for innovation within, within the market. Um, exactly the magnitude of that, I think, is hard, is hard to say. Um, but it definitely will have impacts in terms of managing times of use and um, behavior of the individual appliances. Well, let's talk about industry, because this is one that was always assumed, a sector that would, we always assumed would take a long time uh, to electrify because it needs high heat in some cases. Um, but now mm. we're seeing industrial heat pumps move into low and medium uh, sources of heat. We're seeing some real innovation with heat batteries. We've had the Rondo heat battery folks uh, on our on our show. Um, what's your take on the pace of electrification in industrial processes? Yeah, I mean, I think as with all parts of uh, of the energy system, the things that are easier to electrify will electrify faster, and the things that are not as easy will take will take longer. So we're seeing much faster uptake in in parts of manufacturing that that require less um, electricity, and but again, the high heat ones, as you say, are harder and harder. But also. Uh, the technology will Im improve for the easier ones before we get to the hard ones, which then makes the harder ones easier. So um, I agree that it is that it is more complicated also because it's much more granular. You can't split up industrial industry into you know the three types of road transport that we consider. So it's more complicated and each of them have their own peculiarities. Um, but it's I agree, it's definitely probably more possible than we used to think. I also think that that hydrogen will will start to play a role there um, because hydrogen is often already used as a feedstock, so they're already used to to working with it. Uh, it, it makes some high heat processes more achievable. Um, and and that's probably where we we will start to see green hydrogens kick off. Uh, maybe we can uh, wrap up this part of the interview with uh, a question about competitiveness, because your model, as you've mentioned a number of times, uh, is based on economics. And so what we've argued here at Energy Media is, in fact, elect electrification of these various sectors, transportation, buildings, industry, is really critical to a an economy's long-term competitiveness. You want to, you know, want to, you, you get more value. You bring down your costs. You you uh, decarbonize so that if you're selling into places like Europe or you've got a, a carbon tax, uh, you're not penalized. Would you agree that it is part? Uh, it's important for competitiveness now, but that that importance will increase over time. Yes. Um, yes. Absolutely. Because intrinsically electricity is so much more efficient if you can switch to electricity you will be using less energy and energy is expensive so so of course electrification improves competitiveness um it's also again related to energy security as we've said electricity is often much easier to produce domestically um and that improves um your competitiveness if you're not importing fuel um so yeah that that is a a motivator, I think, in more parts of the world than we imagine, um, is the yeah the competitiveness and and the the economy of the of electrification. Uh, Emma, thank you very much for this.
Thank you.